we had a fellow one time come in and we gave him a whole tour of the sugar house while we were boiling and he we explained it all but after we were done he looked and he said where do you add the sugar <laughs> you want to know when we were dumping the sugar into the oven I'm Doug Monroe, and this is my daughter, Wheeler Monroe. This is my son-in-law, Michael Waldeck. We all three live here at Waterfall Farm and make maple syrup here at Waterfall Farm. We've been doing it for, mm, there's a, this will be our 13th year coming up. A lot of people just are kind of amazed that it's done here at all. I mean, they, they don't realize that it could be done here. They do say that, I thought this was just done up north somewhere. Yeah. You know, Vermont and uh, Canada, uh, but not in North Carolina. So in the fur furthest south in the United States, we are in North Carolina, and we are inspected by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, and they tell us that we're the only maple syrup operation that they inspect. And uh, this is the second year coming up that we'll have all of the equipment we need to make maple syrup the modern way. With a evaporator, steam away, hydraulic filter press, and a reverse osmosis, and all that. We're real excited about it. We're bona fide. Yeah, no yeah, more yeah. buckets and hot rocks. Right. right. We're on like a north facing slope of Three Top Mountain, facing uh, the Blue Ridge from the Blue Ridge Mountains, you know, Thibelite Range. It's a pristine place where at the on the side of a mountain, the end of a road. It's quiet, it's beautiful. We have four square seasons here. It's magical. The insects sing in the summertime and the sap flows in the winter. You can hear the water pouring down in the creeks and the ravines. We live in a, an area where there is clean water flowing out of the ground. We can actually drink the water in the creeks around here. And we have. And uh, the air is clean. The, land is clean. It's sort of an extraordinary, extraordinarily, wonderfully wild place. It's not been uh, compromised in any way. Property, the land above us, is all protected uh, in conservation easements of some kind or another. And they protected it because of the clean water, actually. If you don't protect water at its source, where can you protect it? Right? So the water coming out of the ground out of these mountains is clean, fresh spring water. It's not really a rainforest here, but it's almost a rainforest. We get about 50 to 60 inches of rain a year. I got into it uh, in 2006. Uh, I have a friend, or had a friend, he's no longer with us, and he would make maple syrup every year at his house. He had about 50 trees around his house that he would tap. And I would go over and hang out with him while he was making syrup, and I would eat his syrup and, you know, just enjoy the uh, uh, camaraderie of being out in the yard, boiling down sap, and uh, shooting the breeze, how, how, you, how you do. So anyway, one year, 2006, he gave me 10 taps. He said, you ought to tap those trees on your driveway and cook the sap down on that wood cook stove you've got in your kitchen. I tapped 10 trees, collected the sap, boiled it on my wood cook stove, and then I had a full pan or two going and boil, boil, boil all day long. I sat there and read a book and kept feeding the fire. And, and I made like six tablespoons of syrup <laughs> with the entire day's haul. And I ate it all. And I was hooked. That began making a maple syrup. The following year, I did 20 taps. The, the year after that, I did 30 taps. And then by then, I moved out into the backyard and my wife would go collect the sap and I would man the boiler. And, uh, That's a good deal. And it was yeah. a great deal. <laughs> and, uh, but when I got to 40 taps, she cut me off. She said, that was it. No more, <laughs> no more taps. Because she was collecting the, the, syrup, the sap in five-gallon uh, jugs. And they were heavy. And she was slipping and sliding and falling down. Sometimes it'd be raining. And sometimes it'd be snowing and muddy and slick and all that. So she said, no more taps. 40 taps was it. I was... Um, Coming on retirement age, I was in the nursery business and I uh, decided it would be a fun thing to do would be to have a little maple syrup business and sell maple syrup at the farmer's market and decided to go ahead and build a sugar house and go inside with a real evaporator that I uh, 
researched and found a leader evaporator in Swanton, Vermont. I think, I think <laughs> my friend Harry Beard told me about leader evaporator because he was from Vermont. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that said you can buy your, your supplies from leader. Went and talked to my agricultural extension agent and told him what I was thinking about doing and would there be possibly any money. He said, yes, there's this fund that's called the Golden Leaf Fund. It's the tobacco settlement money when the tobacco companies were sued by the state. So I applied for, I wrote, wrote a grant. I was asking for $9,500. Had to be interviewed for the grant. And I had just made some syrup the day before. It was great timing. When I sat down in front of them, I asked them if they would all like to taste my syrup. And this is what I want to make. I passed it around and they all ate some and they were all smiles on their faces. And we had a great interview and uh, I left and it turned out that I was the only unanimously chosen grantee. Because uh, you bribed because the, I bribed the, the board. The board. I did. Yeah, so this is um, Wheeler Monroe Leather Company and we make a line of tool belts that are all um, tailored to specific tools. Um, our main niche market are um, tool belts for people who are gardeners, farmers, and florists. Um, we also make tool belts for woodworking and a few other miscellany um, specialized things. It's an online business and we ship them all around the country and all around the world. So this holds a hori hori digging knife pruners and a folding knife, maybe a phone or some gloves, but this is a really uh, popular um, garden belt design. But we're sort of kind of like the sugar business. We're not really looking to become a huge business. We run this business as sort of a engine to support our lifestyle and working around the clock isn't the lifestyle that we want to live. But one of the things that's been really wonderful about it too is that People taste our syrup and they think, wow, you know, this is different than the syrup they've ever had before. We do have a different flavor to our syrup here. It has a, uh, a butterscotchy, you know, vanilla, uh, caramel, caramel mm -hmm. flavors to it. And late in the season, we get some molasses hints to kind it as well. Brown sugar and brown molasses. Sugar. Yeah. Right. I think that regardless of what specific flavor you're getting, it's very robust. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong flavored syrup, which um, I think makes it better, personally. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it's very distinctive. But, uh, that's kind of exciting, too, to, to turn them all into a maple syrup that's a little bit different in Southern. Yeah. The whole Southern thing. We are, the, we are in the South. We are in North Carolina. <laughs> a lot of people say, I thought you had to be more pretentious to make maple syrup, but that's why it's made up north, right? <laughs> right. <laughs>